Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to my tier list for the Tomes in Age of Wonders 4. Now, do keep in mind, I only have about 200 hours with the game, and I haven't fully explored the possibilities of every single tome or every single combination of tomes, okay? That would be an exhaustive effort. However, I do feel like I've played enough of the game to have a general feel for how each of the tomes play, how strong they are, roughly speaking, and what general strategies are quite powerful. So let me talk to you a little bit about my biases. Um, I have mostly played Chaos, I have mostly played Nature, and I have mostly played Order. Those three lines are the three that I have played the most, so I'm probably going to be a little bit biased towards them. I have played a decent amount of Astral, and a little bit of Materium, as well as Shadow, but I'm not nearly as experienced in those areas. Uh, I also have a pretty heavy bias towards heroes as well as tier one units and specifically tier one skirmisher or ranged units. Um, I also have a really big bias towards ranged units in general. I think they're super, super strong. I have a big bias towards racial transformations because they provide benefits to your entire race without any upkeep cost. And I generally have a bias towards tile improvements, i.e. special province improvements, that give you access to something you can't normally access. So for example, the ruler statue gives you extra Imperium, right? There's no other thing in the game that gives you extra Imperium, so that gets pretty highly rated. Now, let's start off with the tier one tomes. And the first tome that we're going to talk about is the Tome of Amplification. Let's start off with our tier one tomes. And the first tome that we're going to discuss is this tome right here, the Tome of Evocation. If you're not familiar with the Tome of Evocation, it is a astral tome, a tier one tome, which means that it benefits from all the astral line abilities, which is probably Probably something we should talk about before we actually get into the tier one tome stuff. Each of these lines of abilities is probably something I'll want to do a video on in of itself, but here is my extremely hardline bias. Chaos is the S tier, Nature is the A tier, Order and Astral are both B tier, and Materium is C tier. So keep that in mind. This is going to influence my opinion, right? All Chaos books are going to be treated as a higher rating just because they give you Chaos Affinity, which gives you some of these really powerful abilities, especially Impressment, right? Which makes your Tier 1 units cost 30% less upkeep. This is just straight up amazingly powerful. Similarly, Nature allows you to found cities faster, get extra food from your farms. Druidic Care is one of the greatest abilities in the game, getting plus 5 mana for every single resource node in your empire. Super powerful. Um, so there's a lot of stuff like that that's going to influence this decision that I haven't fully gone over. Um, if I were to do a really big comprehensive a video on this. This would literally take me days, if not years. Um, but just know that that bias, right? Chaos is the top, Nature is the second best, Order and Astral have some really interesting abilities, and then Shadow and Materium are kind of meh. Really, they're just kind of eh. And that, of course, is going to influence my opinion of this Tome of Evocation. Now, if you're not familiar with the Tome of Evocation, we'll go over it really quickly. It gives you the Lightning Weapons ability for your heroes, it, which gives your heroes plus four Lightning Damage and minus two Physical Damage. It also gives you the Channeling Tower Province Improvement, which is a really damn good Province Improvement. So it is worth uh, quite a lot here. Plus 10 mana is very significant. That's twice as good as a normal Conduit, and it can be placed on any tile rather than just on a tile with a mana node. So already looking at the Tome of Evocation, I'm seeing a couple of really powerful things here. But then we have something like the evoker and honestly this is one of the weakest tier 2 battle mage units in the entire game it can inflict electrified to up to three units on a single turn but i would say electrifying arc is one of the weakest three action point abilities in the entire game when it comes to battle mages so the evoker is very very weak lightning focus is quite a powerful ability because it does just straight up give you plus two lightning damage as well as a chance to inflict electrified this is what i would consider to be like a strong ability it's relatively cheap it affects pretty good units fulmination is quite a powerful ability as well especially because it's a very early game focused one lightning torrent is fantastic um, this spell is amazingly good being able to inflict damage on an enemy stack as well as lower their lightning resistance combined with the fact that you will have extra lightning damage on your units, you'll have tons of extra lightning damage on your units, and you'll have units that do extra lightning damage, right? Both the Lesser Storm Spirit and the Evoker, and you also have spells that do lightning damage. So this tome is extremely coherent, which is why it sits very comfortably in the A tier for the tier one tomes. It is a really damn good tome. I would say there's almost never a game that you can go wrong where you take the Tome of Evocation and at the very least take like Lightning Blades, Lightning Torrent 
and fulmination. The combination of these three things can make your frontline melee very powerful. It definitely falls down when it comes to buffing up ranged units, like actually dedicated ranged units. But if you're going for support units, if you're going for battle mages, melee units, this is a great tome. Next up, we're going to talk about the Tome of Warding. Now, there's a whole bunch of things in here um, that make this kind of a bad tome. It's not a terrible tome, it's just not great. I wouldn't put it down in D tier, but I don't know if it's good enough for B tier. Let me explain. So bolstering support, this adept hero skill, this is just straight up terrible. Plus one bolstered resistance is not much. I mean, there are certain situations where you can get a lot of value out of this if you take like mass rejuvenation and then you get plus one bolstered resistance to your entire army. I mean, it's not the worst thing ever, right? There are ways to make this work, but honestly, there are just better hero abilities, staves of warding. Um, this is just a straight up just kind of okay ability. And it's one of the best abilities in this tome. Um, the fact that it gives support units uh, their abilities will give plus two bolstered resistance to your units. Uh, pretty good if you're playing Barbarian or Feudal because their their support units can hit up to uh, seven units with a single support ability. Especially if you're playing Feudal, you can basically max out your bolstered resistance by like turn three or four uh, across your entire army. So there are situations in which the Tome of Warding is pretty good with the Staves of Warding. Mark of Invulnerability. This is like, if you really need to save a unit, it's okay. I don't think it's that great. There are situations where you can get a lot of value out of it. The Phantasm Warrior is just, in my opinion, a bad unit. It's a mana upkeep unit in the early game when mana is extremely tight. It costs mana to summon. It doesn't do anything special, even though it's a shield unit. It really just doesn't do enough. It is slightly stronger than an average tier one shield unit, which is fine, but I still don't think it does enough. Now, the second best ability here is the Magical Wards. This will give you massive resistance to basically all forms of elemental damage, lightning, fire, and frost, which is really damn nice, don't get me wrong. But really, if you're picking this up, you're here for the Staves of Warding, and you're here for the Magical Wards, and then nothing else really here does much. Static Shield, if this was a unit enchantment that applied to shield units, it would actually be super good. Uh, maybe lower that down to like a 30% chance, like the um, ethereal unit, Astral Refuge or whatever it's called. I can't remember what it's called. But yeah, honestly, it's really hard to give this anything other than just like a C tier. It's an okay book. It's not objectively bad. Now we're going to talk about our first S tier book, which is the Tome of the Horde. This thing is just disgustingly good. In fact, I don't even need to like hesitate to put this thing instantaneously up into S tier. Everything about this is amazing. First of all, it's Chaos Affinity. Chaos Affinity is the best affinity currently in the game in terms of balance, in my opinion. The Mob Camp Special Province Improvement is amazing. It has amazing synergy with the Tome of the Horde. It makes your Tier 1 units cheaper. It gives you draft. It gives you food. It counts as a forester, so it boosts a lot of really important buildings. You also get Battle Seeker training, which makes all Tier 1 units in the army game 20% damage to their attacks. If you take um, either Prolific Swarmer or the hero ability that lowers unit upkeep in conjunction with the impressment ability, which makes your units cost minus 30% upkeep, you can save across a stack 20 gold per turn and hiring a hero, right? Hiring a hero costs 30. So in my opinion, the Tome of the Horde is extremely good. Not at spamming stacks of T1 units, but it's spamming stacks of support heroes supported by stacks of T1 Sunderers. Um, if, especially if you're playing a Barbarian. Um, really powerful, amazingly powerful book. Basically, you can take this in any build as your first book, and it will just make that build stronger. That's how powerful it is. The Fury of the Horde, this is amazing. Makes all your friendly Tier 1 units gain 10% damage. Uh, that scales really well in the late game as well with the Chaos Seed, the Chaos Root, and the Chaos Thingy. I can't remember what it's called. Chaos Heart. Spawnkin, literally just one of the best minor racial transformations in the entire game, and it comes at Tier 1 because it just straight up gives all of your units 20% damage in every situation, which is ridiculous. You combine Spawnkin plus Battle Seeker training plus Strength training, all of your Tier 1 units will do 50% more damage, which is honestly ridiculous. Then you have Blaze of the Horde, which is a scaling damage spell that scales really well off your Tier 1 units, but also scales off all of your non-Tier 1 units. Um, you can have up to, you can easily get 15 tier 1 units into a battle, right? And so that's 15 times 3 is 45 damage, plus 3 heroes is 51 damage, and then that does 50% of the damage in an AoE. 
um, in the fir- like if you play defensively in the first two to three turns of a battle, you can just crap out an insane amount of damage. And if they're vulnerable to fire, you can just straight up kill things. Summon a regulars is literally one of the best summon spells in the entire game because it's a mana costing summon spell that uses gold as upkeep and it summons tier one units, which get buffed by a whole variety of other abilities. This is just easily just one of the best taunts of the game. This, I could literally gush about it. Like you should probably take this in every build right now until other stuff is buffed or this is nerfed slightly. It's just so insanely strong. The Tome of Pyromancy, I'm going to give that like a solid C tier, I think. It's just not amazing, let me explain. You get Searing Blades, you get Fiery Arrows, you get Ignite. It's basically just like a worse version of the Tome of Amplification. It's not exactly that. It's okay. Um, Honestly, having said that, it probably deserves just to be a B tier then instead of a C. It's just like a slightly worse version of the Tome of Evocation, rather. Sorry. The Ritual Pyre is a relatively strong special province improvement. It lets you scale mana based on your foresters. Searing weapons is a reasonable ability. You can get pretty good extra damage if your enemies are burning. However, this thing gives you some very strange ways to inflict burning. Like you need to have either a lesser magma spirit or a pyromancer in your army, or you need to cast fiery arrows and then you'll get to benefit from the extra burning damage from Searing Blade. So it's just kind of a little bit difficult. Um, I mean, Immolate, here's the thing. This has like really good synergy in of itself with all of itself. But the problem is you can only ever research four things per cycle. And you kind of need everything in this to make this book work with itself. So that's why it kind of falls a little bit worse than the Tome of Amplification or the Tome of Evocation. The Tome of Evocation just works out of the box slightly better. The Tome of Enchanting, I believe it's called, or Enchantment, That sits probably comfortably at C tier. That's where I would put that. I don't think I can justify putting it up higher. And let me explain. It has some really powerful things. Like, for example, Sundering Blades gives your melee attackers a chance to lower other people's defenses, which is a relatively powerful ability. Don't get me wrong. Especially if you're playing like a materium focus build where you can get defense when you get attacked. Um, But Spell Tempered Shields is like literally one of the worst abilities in the entire game. Um, Unless you have a way to reliably trigger defense modes while actually getting things done usefully. Um, The Copper Golem is, again, this is just another tier one unit that costs mana that doesn't do anything special. I mean, it's an elemental, so it's immune to some effects, but I don't think that just, I just don't think that does enough in of itself. The one thing that the Tome of Enchantment does that's kind of unique is the Rune Carver's Camp gives you draft and allows you to get mana from your quarries, but it's really not that much mana. It's a trickle of mana at best. And it gives you Materium Affinity, which is one of the worst affinities. Seeker Arrows is a pretty good spell, right? Giving your units extra range is quite powerful. It lets you position them more aggressively. But here's the thing. You almost never want to be taking shots from maximum range anyway. So getting plus one range isn't that big of a deal. Um, You almost want to be taking your maximum accuracy attacks as often as you can. I would say Awakened Tools is one of the better early game city spells. Um, Production and draft at the cost of stability. This is pretty good. Like if you think of this in terms of efficiency, this is like getting four quarries that provide production and draft for the city stability cost of two quarries. Um, So quite a a powerful spell. I would say the Awakened Tools, Sundering Blades and Seeker Arrows are all quite good, as well as Sundering Strikes for your heroes. But really, this is just, this just doesn't do enough. And it's kind of a similar story for the Tome of Rock, which I think is just straight up worse, Um, which is why it's going to go down. Man, is this going to be my first D tier book? I think it is. This book is just bad. Um, Earthkin is okay. Like, this is the only thing in here that's kind of okay. Lesser Stone Spirits are kind of okay. But, like, Rock Blast is kind of an eh single target damage spell. Stone Skin is kind of an eh defensive spell. Like, it's just... The hero skill is really bad, a chance to inflict bleeding. Bleeding isn't a very strong or reliable way to do damage. The central quarry, I mean, the central quarry is pretty good. It's a quarry that provides a whole, like it basically doubles the efficiency of quarries that are placed adjacent to it. Um, Gargoyles just, I mean, you can kind of make gargoyles work, but they're a tier two mana costing unit, which means they cost like, what, 12 mana per turn, which is insane considering you're going to be getting this really early into the game and you're not going to be able to sustain that and you need that mana to cast spells. But the problem with this book is that the spell that you can cast is kind of bad, right? This is your only real offensive spell. You don't get a defensive spell. I think, well, I mean, you get a defensive spell, but there's absolutely no circumstance in which I would ever really consider casting Stone Skin. Like, re- like there is no situation in which I think Stone Skin is a good spell to cast. Just a straight up bad book. Um, honestly, it needs some work. Which brings us comfortably to our second S tier book, right? Which is the Book of Roots, the Tome of Rooting. Um, And it really just comes down to Vine Prison. Uh, This is literally the best combat summon spell in the entire game. Uh, 
you can, because of the way the AI works, you can basically eliminate five to five to six units from an enemy battle um, with just this spell. Living Vines are ridiculous. They're honestly just kind of overpowered. This should really only summon three Living Vines. Five is kind of ridiculous. This book could literally just contain this Vine Prison spell and nothing else, and it would still be overpowered. But it does have other really useful things. Like, for example, the Herbalist, which is a great way for you to get food and mana, as well as potential conduit scaling, right? You, if you put this adjacent to other things, you can get some pretty good scaling off this. You get poison weapons for your heroes, which gives you a little bit of chance to get poisoned. You get poison blades, which is all right. You get poison arrows, which is all right. Um, you get healing roots, which is an okay healing spell. And you get the entwined thrall, which is kind of a bad tier one unit. However, it's a tier one skirmisher, which makes it slightly better. And it has the poison needle spell, which is a pretty decent. So I would say the entwined thrall is an all right unit. I would definitely go ahead and say this book is S tier based on vine prism, but everything else in here is like acceptably good. Which also brings us to our second A tier book, which is the Tome of the Beasts. The Tome of the Beasts is incredibly powerful for a variety of reasons, um, but really it just comes down to this spell right here, Mark, Mark as Prey. Um, the fact that it can make all of your attacks flanking attacks, this has just no chance to fail, by the way. This just always succeeds. So all of your attacks are flanking, which means you do 25% more damage, and you sunder the enemy's defense by three times, and their status resistance by three times, meaning you have a better chance to inflict poison, you have a better chance to inflict status effect. This just makes it so that you can focus down high-value targets with a ranged army so incredibly easily, especially if you have some way to inflict marked on the enemy to lower their evasion in conjunction with Marcus Prey. This spell is just so insanely powerful. It's really good. Honestly, it could be nerfed down to two Sundered Resistance or two Sundered Defense and it would still be really damn good. I think this spell probably... I, I would much rather see them buff stuff before they start nerfing things, personally. Um, but Animal Kinship, Summon Wild Animal, Call the Wild Wild Speaker, all of these things are okay. Um, the really nice thing is the Wildlife Sanctuary. I'm pretty sure this is just a really good way to get another Lumber Mill that gives you a whole bunch of draft. And the other thing as well, you get to unlock the recruitment of animal units. And animal units can actually fill a pretty interesting role in your army, depending on the type of animal unit you rec recruit. But particularly recruiting spiders. Um, spiders in this game are broken, and the fact that you can recruit spiders with the Tome of Beasts um, is insane. And you can also cast Call of the Wild, which gives all your animals plus two defense and plus one, one strengthen, which is a bunch of stuff. Your leaders can get pack leader, which makes your animal units even better. Um, it gives them flanker. They do extra damage when they're flanking. And then you have the ability to inflict distracted. Just super good. Um, just super good. The Wild Speaker is also one of the best. It's not one of the best support units in the game. It's one of the best um, animal based support units. Being able to unleash the beast is quite powerful, especially if you have like good spiders. Like I would have like, I would honestly two wild speakers plus four spiders is just a disgustingly powerful stack. The fact that they do a little bit of poison damage, blight damage is fine too, and they can conjure a tier one animal, which is like any unit that can summon a tier one animal is honestly super strong because you're essentially adding chaff to the battle chaff that can eat up attacks and do a little bit of chip damage on your enemies so again this just everything about this just screams super powerful i'm going to talk about the tome of zeal and the tome of faith so the tome of faith i think i would put this comfortably up in a tier and i think the tome of tome of zeal sits comfortably in b tier um these are okay uh, the Tome of Zeal. The Tome of Zeal, this is like an average book. These are kind of slightly worse than average books. These are kind of better than average books. Um, but I would say the Tome of Faith is really good for some interesting reasons. Mostly just revolving around the Faithful, Whisp Faithful Whispers. Being able to get allegiance with free cities in certain situations can actually lead to you having a really powerful economy when you vassalize a whole bunch of stuff. The Chaplain is a very powerful support unit um, because it is a tome tech unit that takes gold as upkeep and gold is very plentiful uh, you can build it in your cities you don't have to summon it it has a reasonably powerful spirit blast it has healing prayer that heals a whole bunch of health and removes negative status effects and it also has bless which gives you fortune strength and bolstered resistance this is like a massive dps increase and resistance to magic just all in all a very powerful unit you combine that with the fact that you can get staves of mending which gives your chaplains a free mending touch ability which is a one range targeted heal that has a reasonable cooldown and also reduces their upkeep oh, and has potential scaling later on everything about the tome of fate just kind of works really well you have wrath of the faithful which is an okay spell it's kind of tome it's like the tome of the horde you can make this work pretty well army heal is a fantastic spell sometimes you don't have the 
capability or time to heal an army up and get them to sit still inside your territory so army heal can keep you topped up the convent is a really nice building because it gives you a ton of knowledge and a ton of mana which helps you upkeep all of the things like faithful whispers and all this stuff um, the abbey is a really interesting province improvement because it's essentially like two research posts in one that you can put next to your farms for a slight boost i don't think the actual bonus here the status protection thing that's not very good um, but generally Tome of, the, Tome of Faith, just really good. Gives you order affinity. Also, part of the reason why the nature books are so good is because they give you uh, nature affinity. Tome of the Faith, really good book. Tome of Zeal, on the other hand, just kind of an all right book. It has some powerful things. It has fanatical workforce. I think this is just a worse version of the Baterium spell that does a similar thing, except it also gives you draft and it has permanent upkeep. Um, the Circle of Zealotry is honestly one of the best quarry-based tile improvements if you're going for a negative alignment or positive alignment game because of the sheer amount of draft and city stability that it provides um, really really powerful it gives you order affinity uh, the zealot is one of the most powerful summonable units in the game it's a sum it's a mana summon that uses gold um, so it's a great way to resupply your army uh, works really well with the tome of the horde works really well with everything um, zealot is just a great cheap throw it at the enemy unit um, Condemnation, this is quite nice. It does a little bit of damage and inflicts Condemned, which allows your Legion of Zeal, which allows your um, units to do spirit damage to hit harder. Yeah, and then you have Inspiring Chant, which gives friendly units in a 2 hex radius, plus 10 morale and 2 strength and if they have Zeal. Uh, you cast this twice on your army and they're going to do 40% more base damage and have a 40 per or have a 20% chance to crit. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful for melee heavy early game armies. Um, super, super good. I don't think it steps right up into the tier of A, but I would say this is like on the edge of being A tier. Now, if the Tome of Pyromancy was a worse version of the Tome of uh, Evocation, then the Tome of Cryomancy is just straight up a downgrade over the Tome of Pyromancy uh, for a variety of reasons. So first of all, it gives you Shadow Affinity. Shadow Affinity just isn't as good as the other affinities. The School of Cryomancy is a research post improvement. Research posts, in my opinion, are not as good as other province improvements. It does give you a little bit of mana, a little trickle if you're on ice, but it's not that much. Frost Weapons just isn't that good. Um, it's quite hard to inflict Frozen on units compared to Burning. Um, but, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Frost Arrows, it's okay. I mean, it's really easy to inflict Slowed, um, which is, if this hero ability also had 20% damage against Slowed, it would be a, quite a bit better. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Just the 20% damage, it's quite easy to trigger this, and they do quite a lot of Frost damage. I mean, it's decent. Blizzard is just a straight-up worse version of the Evocation version of the spell that does lightning damage and lowers enemies' lightning resistance. I mean, the status resistance is nice. I mean, it can kind of all work together. But the problem is this build doesn't have a reliable way to inflict Frozen, right? Compared to the reliable ability of Evocation to infl inflict Electrified. Like a 30% chance on a single target to freeze them or slow them. A 90% uh, chance to inflict Frozen or Slowed on a single target. On a tier 2 Battle Mage unit. Sure, it's on a low cooldown. Like, you can use it every second turn. But man, it just... Everything about this just screams weak, to be honest with you. It's just the worst version of all the other spells. This is easily the worst elemental book of them all. The Tome of Souls, that's got to be a book that I put... I think I think it goes into the same tier as the Cryomancy book. It is slightly better. Like, I, I really want to put it into B tier, but man, someone's got to go into C tier. And I think it's just, honestly, the Tome of Cryomancy is going down to D tier. Yeah, it's got to. If the Tome of Souls is C tier, then the Cryomancy is D tier. It's just a bad book. It's not nearly as bad as this, which is why I'm kind of struggling to, to choose where it goes. But it's, it's definitely not great. Now, the Tome of Souls is all right. It kind of works and it can pay off well if you follow it up with some more undead stuff but i mean soulbind army it's just not that good soul fire it costs souls you have to harvest souls you have to collect souls you have to do all this stuff it can kind of work it, it it's a it's a book about summoning undead things that don't require mana to summon but they do require mana to upkeep so in this way it's just kind of like a slightly more efficient way to summon mana costing units but mana costing units are expensive and difficult to maintain and you know it's just yeah it's just not it's just not an ideal book for the situation you want to be in right we've got another s tier book i love the tome of amplification this thing everything about this screams an s tier book in my opinion um 
It's got a really nice adept hero skill for battle magic that just makes all of your tactical spells do more damage. It's got a really nice province improvement. It's a conduit that increases your world's map casting points, which is equivalent to having a wizard king plus one level. Um, it gives you astral affinity, which is an okay affinity. It has amplified arrows, which makes your ranged units into disgusting AoE monsters because they do 30% of their damage to another target within three hex of their current target. Um, super powerful at damage efficiency here. This is just straight up a huge DPS increase on your range units. Uh, Conjure Amplification Pylon in, in conjunction with Spell Amplification is quite good because it increases the damage of your spells by another 20% and it also does damage. It's a combat summon. Combat summons are really high tier uh, spells because they eat up enemy actions and do other things as well. Um, one of the most powerful things you can do with a spell is to use up enemy actions or to give yourself extra actions via healing. Um, so that's kind of the bias there. Frenzying Focus, this is just straight up a really powerful ability. It makes your battle mages just get 10% more damage every time they land an attack. Super strong. Amplify Minds, not a great spell. Still fine if you need the knowledge. Astral Blood, an amazing racial transformation. It basically gives all of your units plus 10% critical hit chance every time you cast a spell. If you have a Wizard King, you can cast two spells on the second turn of the battle, which makes your units just like do a ridiculous amount of damage. And then you can refresh the ability and do that again. So you're up to 40% crit chance on the third turn of a battle. And then you can get up to a 50% crit chance on the fifth turn of a battle. Astral Blood, just insanely powerful. Chain Lightning, eh, not great. Probably the worst part of this book but everything else about it is just completely s tier the tome of scrying man it's hard to place this higher than c tier and the reason that it gets c tier is because there's so much other good stuff in tier two i mean i feel like maybe it lives better in b tier the big problem with this is there's only really three things here that are worth getting mental mark is a really good spell especially if you're a battle mage heavy army because it inflicts two marked which makes your enemies easier to hit and it lowers the resistance and since you're going battle mage heavy it means you'll do a lot of magic damage which resistance is the resistance too you also get guided projectiles which allows you to ignore the obscuring effect which is a 40 percent reduction in enemies chance to get hit and it also allows you to ignore people that are in the way and certain terrain so your accuracy just goes way up with this, especially with battle mages, and you get to summon the Watcher. The Watcher is just a really powerful battle mage with a psychic gaze that can be used every two turns that inflicts even more marked, has a chance to stun, and it uses up three action points, but it does the full damage of the beast. Normally, Watchers do 12 times three damage, 36. They just use their secondary ability, do that much damage, and damage fortified obstacles, and they inflict marked. Just everything about these three things, super amazing. Super, super, super super amazing really good book almost would make it to a tier if scry enemy and tower of truth sight and precognition weren't kind of just eh these just really don't do anything and if it had an actual um tile improvement that was useful but yeah thomas growing it's hard to justify giving this anything more than a b it's still okay it's still good especially if you're going for a battle mage heavy build the tome of revelry is gonna go man it almost fits into B tier, but it's got to be a C tier book. And it's for a few reasons. Yes, it is Chaos Affinity, but this is probably one of the worst Chaos Affinity books, as is the Tome of Mayhem. Um, these are honestly two of the worst Chaos books. There are some nice things about it, okay? Blood Fury Weapons just straight up gives you more physical damage. That's quite nice. And if they kill a unit, they get stronger. However, this is kind of a win more ability. You really need things that help you win, not things that make you win harder when you're already winning. Revels of Blood, eh, it's a siege project that gives you morale not so great maybe this combos really well with the doom herald shadow book um if you have a way to lower your enemy's morale or it works really well with uh the tome of zeal where you can buff up your morale but here's the thing high morale only gives you a 20 percent chance to crit which while good just doesn't really measure up to even some of the tier 2 materium books where you can just give your units 20 percent crit chance in every situation um yeah i mean it's a Probably the one of the worst minor racial transformations. Extra 50% morale from every source. Eh. Revels of Carnage. Extra experience on the army. Eh. The Scald is probably one of the best things about this book. It's probably the second best thing about this book. The third best being the fact that it gives you Chaos Affinity. And the first best thing being the hero skill, Reveler's Triumph, that gives you a 20% extra critical hit damage on the army. This is like a super strong ability. If you could if you could just get this on like another book, this book would instantly be A tier. It's just the fact that like this just doesn't 
on paper this should all be good but it just doesn't really work the Scald is quite good though because it gives you fortune it gives you strengthened it has the song of revelry which gives you rally gives you morale gives you you know it all kind of works together it's just not that good and it's kind of a similar story for the tome of mayhem however that said while the tome of mayhem is one of the worst chaos books it's still quite a bit better than the tome of revelry so i think it would fit comfortably in b tier you can't really go wrong with this right it gives you chaos affinity it has no special province improvement it does give you marker misfortune it gives you curse of misfortune which is a large aoe negative fumble chance which may gives you a huge amount of survivability because if your enemies have a 20 percent chance to do half damage that is like a significant reduction in their dps sig massively significant and if that means a unit lives and you have some healing you can all stack it starts to turn the tide in a battle quite a bit um so confusion is kind of a fun siege project it's relatively cheap it only costs mana it does speed up the rate of your siege i would consider this to be a pretty good siege project gremlin is um this is like an a tier this is like an a tier summon it's a tier two summon so it is quite expensive but it's a skirmisher and skirmishers are some of the best units in the game and it is a skirmisher that essentially makes your enemies get automatically flanked because it turns them around 180 degrees when he used this ability. And this ability does pretty decent damage, right? 20 damage and he's melee. He can run in and do up to like, what, 30, 42 damage in melee. Really damn good. Infectious Insanity is a spell that sounds cool on paper but almost never gives you value. Uh, I have cast this so many times and just basically never gotten value from it. So yeah, Tome of Mayhem comfortably in b tier you know i should probably unlock master skills so i can like talk about all these units a little bit better now we're coming up to what is probably the best materium book in the game and it's for a variety of reasons i definitely feel like this book sits comfortably in a tier the tome of artificing and it's for a whole bunch of reasons right first of all the artisan implements or artisan armaments just gives you a 30 percent critical hit chance across your entire army this is disgustingly powerful uh, it's a huge dps increase bolt repeater side pro side projects they're pretty decent just basically better onagers um the iron golem is an insanely good tier three shield unit mostly because it has all of the it has all of the hallmarks of a summonable unit however it is, uses gold to maintain which makes it an awful lot better because you recruit it from a city um it doesn't really do a whole lot that special it's just that fact the fact that it's basically a summon unit that uses gold um, and it's a really beefy frontliner. Artisan fortification, this is a city structure, it's all right. Siege magic, eh, it's all right. Um, golem mine, really quite good. Extra gold, extra production, free defensive units. Golem assistant, uh, this is one of the best hero skills in the game. Anything that summons a unit for free is a really good unit skill. Because if you imagine, you can bring a maximum of six units per stack this ability lets you bring seven units per stack yes the assistant isn't that good it's a tier 155 health melee striker however it's a free unit you're bringing an extra unit to a battle that's an action point the enemy has to use against you it gives you extra action points more that you can position it to defend you can position it offensively you can get a flank you can get a zone of control on an enemy unit you can prevent certain abilities to go off just really really good um but mainly it's being carried by this the, the critical strike chance and the iron golem and the golem assistant uh that's really what brings this up but i'm going to tell you right now there's going to be very few materium tomes that even make it up into a tier and honestly speaking of a tier there's very few like materium books that are going to make it up into even b tier but the tome of winds does make it there mainly off the back of the zephyr archer basically everything else here is terrible but the zephyr archer is so powerful that it makes it worth it to take this and it mostly also just comes down to the zephyr shot which is a big aoe damage spell yeah just a really good damaging ability that can open up a battle and then otherwise it's a tier three range unit that does really good dps um the rest of the stuff is just not great windborne scouts your scouts are flying wow uh pulls enemy units around dust storm blinds enemies i mean blind is okay um favorable winds makes your army on water move faster the wind rager is kind of an okay elemental summon really the only reason this thing even hot like what if the zephyr asher wasn't in this book this would be a d tier book that's really what it comes down to which honestly makes me want to put it in d tier in my heart but i can't do that now speaking of tier three archers we are going to be putting the tome of glades up into s tier and that is almost entirely off the back of the glade runner here glade runner 
is a disgustingly powerful unit. Now, it doesn't have the AoE capabilities of the Zephyr Archer, but it does have Tracker's Mark, which allows you to massively reduce not only the enemy's ability to evade you. By the way, this is a huge range of five. I think they actually nerfed this recently. No, 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 no. It's still the same. Yeah, huge range of five. Five is insane range. Uh, it's longer than the unit can actually shoot, so it can still help other units shoot. Uh, inflicts marks, lowered their evasion, lowers their defense. Uh, two of these units focus firing on a single enemy unit. Also, Tracker's Mark is a free ability. It doesn't cost any action points. Um, yeah, just super, super powerful Glade Runner. I don't really know how to explain this, but range units are just like kind of overpowered right now. And the fact that this unit makes other range units better at the thing that it's focusing down makes it just disgustingly overpowered and it does up to what 14 42 damage just at a baseline without any buffs or modifications to its damage yeah just really really good um nature affinity gives it a little bit better the sacred meadow it's okay the forest warden ability eh it's okay summon entwined protector this is a really good tier 3 shield um tier 3 shield unit like two entwined protectors plus three glade runners and a support hero um, that's like a stack that could do work because the entwined protectors can AOE heal each other with the healing sap. It's just this whole this whole book with the Glade Runner and the Entwined Protector, really damn good. Really, really damn good. Add in the aspect of the root for the Entwined Protector, which allows them to heal themselves for even more health, allowing them to tank the front line for even longer and also gives them defense mode. Um, really, really powerful. Leaf skin, eh, it's an okay racial transformation, lets you run through forest slightly faster. Create forest, it's alright, lets you place your lumber mills and stuff like that. But mainly it's all about the Glade Runner, and then as a secondary, it's about the Entwined Protector and the Nature Affinity. Really damn good book, super strong. This is going to be arguably one of the worst nature books, the Tome of Fertility, and the fact that I'm putting one of the worst nature books into B tier is going to tell you something about what I think about nature books. It's one of the worst books, and even then it's still really good. You have the fact that you have Animate Flora, which allows you to add a Floral Stinger to your battle. You have the Summon Nymph, which is a just a really powerful support unit. It has an AoE Regeneration Heal and Debuff Remover. It has Seduce, which allows you to mind control enemy units or distract them, making them really easy to focus down. Temple of Fertility is probably one of the worst city structures in the entire game. Don't even bother building it. It's partially what's dragging this down. Blossom of Life, really nice. AoE Heal, super powerful. It is Regeneration, though, so it does trigger at the end of your turn. So there is something to say there. Restore the land, really damn good terraforming spell. Um, Bountiful Fields, super powerful farm, really good for draft and food. Revitalize, just a great hero ability. Um, basically turns them into nymphs. Everything about this book is decent or good, and it's still the worst nature book in the game. I want you to keep that in your mind when we get to the tier 3 and tier 4 natures. The Tome of Inquisition, I would consider this to be an A tier book, partially because of its order affinity, but there's a whole bunch of other reasons. Uh, the first, the big, the big one is the Inquisitor. Yes, it is a tier 3 unit, so it's relatively expensive to maintain, so that is something you need to keep in mind. It's a very expensive unit, but it does a lot of work if you can afford it, right? The Bolt of Judgment is a ranged attack that stuns enemies, so it allows him to disrupt enemy lines as he closes to melee. He is a skirmisher unit, so he has more movement and more capability of closing to melee he does a huge amount of damage 16 damage per attack he has zeal he can scale off of condemned and inflict condemned inquisitor does work inquisitor does a hell of a lot of work the tribunal this is an okay city structure stability is nice the knowledge per population these are just kind of okay not amazing wouldn't really go out of my way to build it mass condemnation this is just a better version of the condemn spell pretty okay burden of guilt um I can't really see many uses for this. Usually if you're in a situation where an enemy's movement speed matters, you're already kind of messed up. Inquisitor Zeal, this is just all right. It gives zeal to your ranged units. It's fine. Tithe Collector is pretty decent. It does give you a way to generate gold, which can help you maintain the Inquisitor. But like a single Tithe Collector is only maybe going to pay for like 75% of an Inquisitor. So really think about that. Just an okay book. Were it not for the Inquisitor, it would just be an okay book. Now the Tome of the Beacon, on the other hand... This is going to be our first S tier order book. Is that a wasp in my room? Why are you here? Leave. Sorry about the wasp based interruption, but we can now talk about the Tome of the Beacon, which I did place firmly into the S tier. Now, there's a variety of reasons for this, um, but the biggest one really just comes down to the Conjure Divine Beacon 
uh, summon spell. This is one of the best summon spells in the game. Um, you basically you summon a totem that heals your units for five health and five morale every turn. It can eat up enemy damage spells. It, it just it's an incredibly action efficient spell that gives you an insane amount of staying power. Then you add to the fact that you have the Covenant of the Fate. This this says 10, but it's actually 5, which allows you to generate more Imperium from your vassals. An incredibly unique ability that no other thing can do. Uh, super powerful. These two things alone make it S tier. Blessed Reinforcements. This is terrible. Don't worry about it. Lightbringer. This is like an A, possibly S tier battle mage unit because it has the Convert ability. In the same way that summoning a unit for free makes your stack like so much more powerful if you have light bringers and they can convert an enemy to your side that's like taking a unit away from your enemy and then adding it to your stack it gives you such a huge advantage mighty meek is also a pretty damn good spell it makes your units cheaper in their upkeep and gives them a little bit of extra damage uh, this is for your tier one unit so it gives them a little bit of extra damage against higher tier units combines well with a lot of things um, champion of the faithful basically allows all of your faithful units to start on high morale i would honestly if i was going for a chaos tome of the horde build i would go for tome of the beacon over the tome of mayhem or the tome of revelry uh, this just works for that kind of a build way better yeah just don't really have too much to say it's an order affinity book with two of the best spells in the game um, because they do some really interesting things and one of the best combat summons in the game and then a really nice unit enchantment and it's also ordered like yeah just everything about it is pretty decent so let's talk about the tome of necromancy so if the tome of souls is c tier the tome of necromancy is maybe also c tier it's maybe a little bit better maybe i could bump it up to b tier do you know what? I'd, I'd feel bad. I'm going to put it up into B tier. It, it's it's a serviceable book. Um, it has a little bit going for it, but it, it can't really do that much. It re like Undead stuff doesn't really get kicked off until you have the Tome of Great Transformation, which is probably the only Shadow S tier book. Um, Restore Undead. This is just a worse version of Army Heal because it only heals Undead units. Rotting Explosion. You have to actually kill a zombie unit to make this work. But before that, you have to actually have a zombie unit. There's a few ways you can get zombies. I mean, you can use the Crypt blade you can use ray zombies you can use necrotic necrotic magic doesn't even do it necromancers can like i mean i guess the necromancer is like a really good unit but i yeah uh they're really expensive they cost a lot to maintain the problem with necromancy is just how mana hungry it is and they just do not give you a way to generate a lot of mana um i mean the soul well is decent because it does give you access to a lot of souls like per turn it's only three per turn per city that you have at least tier two yeah, it's hard. It's hard to make necro... Um, you know what? I have to put it down a tier. I have to put it down. The Tome of Necromancy just... It, it, necromancy just has a really slow start in this game. Tome of the Doom Herald can work really well. But I still think it's honestly... Um, oh man, it's really hard to give this... Dude, I haven't... I, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I've never even picked this book. Because everything I look at here just looks terrible. Um... Maybe it's actually really good. I'm going to put it down in D tier. I've just, I've never been able to, to, to even bring myself to pick that book. Um, it could turn out that it's really good, like, but just, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Just nothing in here excites me. Nothing in here seems very good. And I know it's very, but like, there's a reason I haven't picked this. Because I looked at all these morale affecting things and I was just like, why? Why would I take this? I, I, and I, then I don't. The Tome of Summoning probably fits comfortably in B tier, and then the Tome of Teleportation maybe fits comfortably into A tier. Uh, let me explain. The Tome of Summoning, it, the problem is that, like, the Astro Serpent is kind of a just crappy unit. You can kind of make them work, you can kind of make them do work, but they're just not amazing. Unless they've been buffed or something, because I don't remember them having this ability. This is another thing you have to keep in mind. Like, the game is getting patched and updated and all this sort of stuff. So things might have changed but between the last time I tried these guys out. But I just remember the Astral Serpent just having, like, really low survivability. Even with the Refuge ability, it just didn't do enough. Um, really good at assassinating things. But the problem is, assassinating things is fine, but you have to be able to live through it. Um, Conjuring Astral Keeper, this is a pretty good combat summon spell. Everything else in here is kind of just bad. Healing magic origin units. This is again just a worse army heal. Um, this is pretty good because it does make your magic origin unit really strong. Um, and then arcane bond lets you steal magic origin units from your enemy. It's okay. 
The summoning well is a really cool special province improvement, but you ideally you shouldn't be fighting defensively, and so you shouldn't need the combat summon spells. The mana and knowledge is nice, the astral affinity is okay, the seed of astral is reasonably good, it is nice to get a 20% discount. Wisp familiar is really good, so yeah, I think I think this barely scooches by as a B-tier book, but the Toma Teleportation on the other hand, this I think fits really comfortably in an A-tier, uh, really just down to the Phase Beast. The Phase Beast here is a really powerful tier 4 animal unit, which means it scales really well with nature books, by the way. Just kind of putting that out there. Um, it's an ethereal animal or something like that, I don't remember. Basically, it can teleport around, it can do, do charge strikes, it has displacement. Uh, displacement is one of the most powerful defensive abilities in the entire game. Because it means when an enemy with a repeating attack t attacks you, and it's the first time you've been attacked this turn, they will only get to attack you once out of their three attacks. Um, and then you teleport away and they don't, no longer do damage to you. And sometimes you'll teleport in a direction that means no more units can attack you. Sometimes you'll teleport into a worse position. It's a really tanky unit, has a ton of armor and resistance, has a ton of, ton of health. Just a fantastic thing. It's also a tier 3 book, so you do get the Seed of Astral. But this, in addition, also gets the Chronogate unique province improvement, which is a teleporter that doesn't take mana upkeep and actually provides mana and knowledge. Teleporters normally cost 10 mana to maintain, and... The Astral Affinity can also get a plus 15 mana per teleporter ability. So this is just a great, great ability. Um, it also grants evasion to armies that have passed through the Chrono Gate, which is a nice little boost. Um, I would say the Quick Phase is not a very good hero ability, allows them to teleport around. The Astral Trade Relay is an okay goal generating building. Phasing Enchantment is a pretty good ability for your support and battle mage units. It allows them to teleport out of zone of control without having to use up action points, which then allows you to teleport and then start throwing more spells. Mass recall is quite handy to get a tele to teleport a friendly army to where you need them to go if they're like out in the middle of nowhere. Emergency teleportation is just a pretty bad healing spell. Don't even ever research this. Um, I've never really seen um, a way to make this use in anything. It's just... I don't see it being useful um i guess there are ways to make it useful but i haven't found them overall i would say this is a pretty damn good book which is why it sits comfortably in a tier the wasp is dude don't come near me bro don't do it watch it dude this is not who invented wasps yeah i may or may not have left the room for about an hour to let that Wasp leave. Listen. Speaking personally, I think the Tome of Pandemonium is probably the worst Chaos Tome in the game. Um, and just, just to have a Tome that goes into D tier for Chaos, I am going to put this into D tier. And it really just comes down to the fact that while the Chaos Eater is a really good unit, it's also a really bad battle mage. It is a melee mage, but it has a lower range than normal battle mages. Um, it's supposed to get up in people's faces. Units typically don't stay alive long enough for you to use Consume Chaos. And even then, if you're using Consume Chaos, you're wasting a turn not attacking. Um, which means the Chaos Eater basically heals itself. And you need to kill at least... Um, you have to get him into melee and he has to remove at least three... Um, elemental effects for it to even be worth it in terms of a trade it's just not a great unit mass hysteria eh random status effects i mean that's a pretty good spell this is a pretty good spell havoc magic 30 percent chance of inflicting a random negative status effect it's a pretty low chance to hit it's going to be pretty late into the game people are going to have pretty good status resistance it's not going to trigger very often and when it does trigger it'll probably not have a huge impact on the outcome of the battle at this stage of the game insight revolution this is probably one of the better parts of this book it's all right, you know, you can spawn a brigand camp and then you can clear it and then get a free unit when you're playing Chaos. Uh, and Vessels of Chaos, you do extra damage for every negative status effect of a target. I mean, it all kind of works, but I just, I've honestly, I've looked at this and my instincts tell me that this is bad and so I've never taken it. It just doesn't, it all kind of works together, but it just doesn't work if that makes sense. Now, the other tier four Chaos Tome instantly gets projectiled up into S tier. Uh, the Tome of Devastation is an amazing amazing tome uh first of all it's a chaos tome it gives you the seed of chaos right perfect it also gives you flame burst weapons this is one of the best hero abilities and unit enchantments in the game especially for some sort of melee unit um 
20% critical hit chance and when this unit kills another unit, that unit explodes and deals 20 fire damage to adjacent enemy units. This just gives your units so much AoE potential when they kill enemies. Um, super powerful. I'm pretty sure it also card counters uh, bone golems or bone monstrosities because when you kill the bone golem, the weakened skeleton spawns and then this ability triggers instantly killing the skeleton that was supposed to spawn incredibly powerful uh the toma devastation would be worth taking for the flame burst weapon alone the toma devastation would be worth taking for the war breed alone it would be worth taking for uh maybe unleash the hounds and focus devastation together so the real power here is just like everything in here is good individually it doesn't need to all combo together war breeds are amazing they're units that are living siege weapons they speed up how quickly you siege down cities uh they're powerful like tier five units but they're only tier four which means they only take three imperium to maintain not seven so they're quite cheap to upkeep uh, they have a heavy charge strike so they ignore charge resistance and they displace people when they hit them allowing you to disrupt enemy for formations allowing your other war breeds to get even better charges they have power cleaves which does one hex cone defense mode and retaliation cancels for up to 33 damage so they continue to do damage after they get into melee unleash the warhounds allows you to spawn a whole bunch of six warhound units at the start of a battle these guys will eat up damage they'll get into the face of the enemy they will inflict marked really really good siege project one of the better siege projects in the game um, Devastator Sphere is probably one of the worst siege projects in the game. I've never been able to make this work. I've tried it a few times. And Focus of Devastation. Like, this is just an okay ability. It, it like, gives your units a chance to cancel defense modes, which can be handy on your support units, giving them a little bit of utility. Um, definitely just a really amazing tome. Like, just honestly, this is a bit like the Tome of the Horde. There, I just can't think of a situation in which you shouldn't take this. I mean, I suppose if you're going Battle Mage heavy, maybe you shouldn't take it. But yeah, if you're, if you're doing anything melee oriented and you're planning on sieging down cities, like the Warbreed is just insane. Um, and oh, and part of the reason why the Warbreed is so strong is that technically it is a um, monstrous version of your race. So it has all of the bonuses of being a tier four unit, but it is your race. So it inherits all your racial transformations. So things like Spawnkin, right? Things like that make it make it into this unit's abilities. The Tome of Vigor and the Tome of Cycles, the Tier 3 Nature Tomes, these are going into A tier. They're very, very good. Uh, just covering the Tome of Vigor really quickly, it has Animal Handler, which makes your animal and cavalry units have mind control and resistance to magic. You also get the Seed of Nature, which is the Tier 3 uh, Province Improvement that lowers nature cost. It has Nature Affinity, which is always really nice. Super Growth is fantastic if you haven't taken Spawnkin, although there's no reason you should never not take Spawnkin, so I don't know why you would take Super Growth. But if you haven't taken spawnkin super growth is fantastic for the extra health and the retaliation attacks really help if you have a melee centric army uh, you also get unleash the beast which allows you to make your phase beasts for example incredibly powerful and difficult to deal with because they become just charging devastating hard to kill berserking beasts uh, summoning animals is all right the totem of the wild is another one of these incredible totem abilities because it'll spawn a whole bunch of tier one animals that you can just charge at the enemy to eat up enemy actions remember anything that uses up enemy actions and the totem of the wild itself will also use up enemy actions because they'll try to take it down uh, just super super powerful empowered beasts is also really damn good if you're doing anything related to animals or if you have phase beasts because they give you a 20% damage boost 10 health and demolisher and it lowers the number of units in the formation of your animals which makes them more resilient in terms of their dps as they lose units in their formation just overall this is a fantastic a fantastic tome that just has a lot of synergy with other things on its own if you were to take this tome on its own it probably doesn't do that much but it combines so well with so many other tomes that it's kind of hard not to recommend it. Um, you could probably make an argument that this could go down a tier, but I'm not going to make that argument. I think the Tome of Cycles could go down a tier um, because it's really being carried by this Druid of the Cycle. This is a tier four support unit that has an incredibly powerful heal that it can refresh with life from death. And it also has a point and click instagib ability which has just a percentage chance of instantly killing a unit. And if it doesn't instantly kill a unit, it inflicts them a triple weakened, so they deal less damage. So it's effectively like they're, you know, one third or two thirds as effective as usual. Um, Drew to the cycle, super powerful, not for the attack, but mostly for the heal and for the instagib. Um, really, really powerful. Honestly, again, this is one of those books where if it just contained the druid, if it just contained the unit, it, it would still be a really powerful book. 
Now, you also have Diffuse Health. This is great if you're a melee-centric army getting up into people's faces because it deals damage and heals. A heal and damage spell are quite efficient in terms of trading. Uh, you have Parting Gifts, which allows all of your units to heal when they die. This combos well with certain summons and stuff like that. Um, not super amazing. I, I, I wonder if... I've never actually tried if this works with Vines, but if this does work with the Summon Vine spells, both of these spells instantly project projectile each other into S tier. Uh, projectiles of Decay, speaking of which, is a, a pretty decent upgrade to your range units, right? Extra two Blight damage and the ability to inflict Decaying, which prevents enemies from healing. Really efficient. Um, really nice. A a, just a good spell. Um, and a Cycle of Seasons. Again, you shouldn't really be fighting defensive battles so having to cast this on a friendly city in order to get its effects and its effects aren't that amazing like it's okay um honestly you could probably double this damage and you could you know double the healing and stuff like that it would probably be all like a, qu quite a bit better um battles don't tend to last long enough for you to go through more than like one cycle so i don't know if the cycle of seasons is that amazing Withering Decay, again, decaying. You know, it's just this is just a this is just a really good book as well, but mostly it's been carried by that druid of the cycle. Now, when it comes to the tier three order books, I wanna say man, these are probably the worst order books. But I think the Tome of Subjugation is probably a C tier, and the Tome of Sanctuary is probably a B, maybe edge of A tier, and they're still like not that great um so to talk about the thomas sanctuary it's a really good book mainly just because of keeper's mark um this basically gives faithful to all of your melee capable units which means that the first time that they have the chance to die um, they won't this is a really good auto resolve ability uh keeps your units alive much longer super fantastic keeper's mark honestly really carrying this could potentially propel it up into a tier um anointed people is reasonable status resistance and spirit resistance these are reasonable salvation is it's an okay healing spell it's single target eh. consecrated domain another eh spell you shouldn't really be fighting inside your domain you should be fighting outside of your domain unless you're specifically going for some sort of magic victory healing spires are amazing uh, you will get 12 healing spires that will heal your units every turn or two uh, so just a ton of healing as well as actually healing your units over time you also get access to the sanctuary which is a spell jammer that actually provides mana rather than costs mana which allows you to have two spell jammers in a single city which means it's much harder to prevent uh or, or it's much harder to prevent spell blocking which is a really powerful ability when it comes to defending your cities if your enemies can't cast spells they're in trouble uh you also get the seat of order and the sanctify ability yeah no it's 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 just a, it's just a decent book the top of subjugation on the other hand this kind of is where the order sort of books fall down a little bit like the tyrant knight it's just a knight with a morale debuff um and it's expensive it's a tier four unit that doesn't do that much it has a morale thing it kind of, the tyrant knight needs to do more that's the reality um that's the reality of the situation. I mean, it is tanky as hell. Don't get me wrong. Now, we are the Diligent Dwarfkin, so we do get plus two defense. So it's it's a pretty tanky unit. Um, but, like, if you're playing Dark or Feudal, you're probably just better off recruiting their version of the mounted unit. Um, subjugating Raid, it's a reasonable seed project. You can steal population. Um, Baron's Palace, it's actually a really good building, but it requires you to conquer cities of other races, um, which is something that is not always efficient. Sometimes it's better to turn them into vassals, especially when you're playing order. Um, intim intimidating aura does do a little bit of work in terms of morale, um, but I don't know if this is enough. I mean, it kind of all works together, right? That you can use final ultimatum to mind control routing units. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, you can make the Tome of Subjugation work, I just don't think it's particularly good. Now, Shadow has been really struggling in these, these, these past few analyses, right? I don't think they have a book that's above B tier, but this is where that changes. I would say both of these Shadow books are at least A tier, and potentially the Tome of the Great Transformation. Honestly, yeah, I think the Tome of the Great Transformation, that deserves to go up to S tier. Mainly because it has Whiteborn which allows you to turn your entire race into undead, which gives them a ton of weaknesses, but also immunity to morale, immunity to poison. They are weak to spirit and fire, which is not great, but there are ways to mitigate that. 
Um, but turning your people undead is fantastic because you get access to lifesteal, which gives you a lot of staying power in your battles, particularly on retaliation attacks, because you take damage and then you retaliate and heal. Uh, and then Fetid Legion is amazing for your melee, right? Plus 10 hit points and weakening aura, meaning uh, this just gives you a ton of survivability because you just automatically weaken people as you grind them down in melee. So you lifesteal for more health and you weaken them so they do less damage and you have more health in general. So the combination of all of these things is just fantastic. The only downside is that Whiteborn is a major racial transformation. So you can only have one major racial transformation. So it competes for the other ones. Still though, I think this is an S tier spot because this is, I think the first, this is the only major racial that's available on tier three, which means you actually don't require any affinity to take this. Now, the other parts of this aren't that great. I mean, Desecrate Structure is fine. It'll give you a little bit more mana. Uh, Domain of Death, eh. City Stability, that's fine. And Necrotic Spires, City Structure, eh. That's fine. Weakening Aura is nice for melee heroes. And the Seed of Shadow is nice, you know, and you got Soul Harvest and Shadow Affinity. You know, it. it's, I would say this is barely an S tier book. But the Tome of the Cold Dark is barely an A tier book. Uh, and it mainly just comes down to Marching Winter. Uh, this terraforming spell allows you to, especially if you have Arctic exploitation and you've gone down um, the Toma Cryomancy in like a frost angle, um, this spell just gives you so much food, so much production, and it's a tier three book as well. Normally you have to wait until tier four to get something of this caliber. Frostling Transformation is fantastic as well because it gives you immunity to the frozen, it gives you morale while you're on cold train, gives you Arctic Walk, Frost Resistance. Um, Veil of Darkness, not very good spell. Flash Freeze, not a very good spell. Summon Snow Spirit is an okay elemental skirmisher. It's pretty decent. Uh, it can do some work. I would say mostly Frosting Transformation, Marching Winter, Summon Snow Spirit, and the Frost Spire are doing a lot of the work here. Especially the Frost Spire giving you a ton of research, letting you push towards the late game. And Shadow is definitely research heavy. Uh, Blinding Magic is eh, it's okay. But yeah, this thing is barely A tier. And the Toma Grey Transformation is barely S tier. And it doesn't really get better from here on out for Shadow. When it comes to the tier 3 Materium books, the Toma Transmutation and the Toma Terramancy. I'm going to be real with you, they barely make it in a D and C tier, and only the, um, only the Toma Transmutation makes it to C tier. It maybe could be B tier, but it's got to be, I think it's got to be C. So the Toma Terramancy is just like bad. Um, Seismic Shock, just a really low impact, super low impact AoE spell. It does 25 damage in a one hex AoE. Crushing Earth is pretty good because it does have a chance of instantly just killing a unit or stunning them, so it is a pretty reliable way to deal with tier 3 or lower units. Um, probably the best part of this, but it has to come with like Earth Shatter, which is just a really bad spell, unless you're really spamming out quarries, I guess, for some reason, don't know why you would do that. Um, Summon Stone Spirit is a reasonably good fighter, but it's a melee, it's an unspecialized fighter unit in melee that has to blink in and quake and do all that stuff like it has potential right the immobilizing phase you blink into the enemy hanks and then you quake and then you can melee strike it has some potential right the quake quake is a pretty da decent spell especially if you blink a few of these guys into the enemy lines and you just you know but the thing is there's just there's better units there's there's be there's just a lot better units tremor ritual eh it's an okay siege project it's just it's bad it's just really bad um, the toma transmutation it's a little bit better here because you do have adaptive armor, but then again, adaptive armor isn't that good. There's things that are better than this. They're cheaper and come earlier. Steel skin is okay, but it does make you weak to lightning. Um, so it comes with downsides. The best thing here is honestly melt armor. The fact that you can uh, melt enemy armor in an AOE and deal fire damage is quite good. The Sundered defense is really damn good. Transmute resources is fantastic if you're going for a gold heavy game, which Materium tends to go for. You don't have to necessarily do much in the way of mana. Um, so Transmute Resources can let you generate a huge amount of gold, which will fuel higher tier Materium books. Um, and the Transmuter is a pretty okay unit. The big problem is that it's tier 4. Um, if this was a tier 3 unit that had roughly the similar stats, I would make it. I would rank it so much higher. But the fact that it's a tier 4 that costs Imperium to maintain, it makes it so much more expensive to maintain. It doesn't even do that much damage. Sure, it inflicts under defense and it bolsters the defense and it can petrify. I mean, th the big thing here is the petrify, okay? Like the AoE stun is sick, don't get me wrong. But is it good enough? The fact that it doesn't do any damage, is that good enough? I just don't think so. The Tome of Astral Mirror, I think, fits comfortably in B tier. And then I'm really tempted to give the Tome of Astral Convergence S tier. 
No, I think I think it only reaches up to the A tier. So let me let me talk a bit about the Astro Mirror. So the Astro Mirror, this is very clearly a B tier ability. Uh, the Mirror Mim Mimic is doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. It can transform itself into other units, which will allow it to mimic their abilities, with the exception of their summons and their... I can't remember exactly what the limitations are, but there are some limitations on this. Um, is this a really strong tier 4 Mimic unit? That is very interesting and powerful. Astral Revelation, not a very impactful spell. Summon Astral Reflections, on the other hand, this is a really good combat summon. It allows you to basically duplicate a friendly unit. Remember, anything that allows you to bring more noise to a fight it uses up enemy actions, uses up enemy abilities. The Oh no, maybe it's Astral Reflections that can't summon other, other units. Maybe Mimics can't. Anyway, look, the point is, this spell is super good. Super, super, super good. Super good. Um, for just bogging down a fight as your backline takes out the enemy. Throne of Mirrors, if this was a spell that you cast on a city, it would be way better, but the fact that it's a city structure that provides no economic benefit and instead just summons an astral reflection of your ruler, it's all right. It's cool and thematic, but it's really low impact. Um, yeah, and then Mirror Veil is doing the other half of the heavy lifting here, making your shield and polearm units reflect 50% of the non-physical damage sustained back onto attackers. This makes you incredibly good against mage heavy factions. Um, and similarly, magic deflection for your heroes as well. And the Root of Astral does improve your Astral buff and healing spells for more bolstered resistance. So there is something kind of going on here, although that's kind of also in the Atome of Astral Convergence. Yeah, this is just a B tier. It's an okay book. It's all right. Now, the Atome of Astral Convergence on the other way, this... <laughs> I was hesitating to put it into S tier, but I think it sits more comfortably in A tier, right? You've got the Arcane Maelstrom. This is a siege project that does a whole bunch of random damage. You've got Cascading Power. This is a sustained world spell that does a whole bunch of random damage based on the number of spells you cast, especially when you're talking about uh, you probably have a bunch of stuff that lets your units scale off the spells you cast anyway if you're going Astral. Explosive Manifestation is a fantastic combat summon spell. It summons a tier 2 Astral creature and does a whole bunch of damage. Um, it's basically two spells in one. It's a summon spell and a damage spell. Uh, really damn good. It, it does everything you want it to do, right? It does damage and it summons a unit. It eats up enemy actions. It gives you more actions. Astral Shattering completely obliterates an enemy province and summons a huge stack of devastating marauding armies um, or marauding astral sea creatures. Very difficult to deal with this. Um, and then Astral Attunement. This is probably the worst major racial transformation in the game. Um, it needs like a little bit more pass through is not a good enough ability plus one mana and plus one knowledge per population these are kind of it's it's the worst it is the worst major racial transformation in the game like if there was a tier list for major racial transformations this would be d tier um it's just not very good not not at the phase of the game it comes if it came tier three then we might be talking about something but the fact that it's a tier four and it's it just doesn't do enough not when all the other major racial transformations are on the cards. So this one is where there's a little bit of a dichotomy when it comes to the book's power level. The actual Tome of Demons is only maybe a C or B tier. I mean, it's still a Chaos book, so it's kind of it's hard to put it down at the C tier. But the, the Tome of Chaos Channeling, that's definitely an S tier book. Another S tier Chaos book. Uh, this is just... The Tome of Chaos channel, right? There's a reason it's S tier. It does everything that you want it to do, okay? It's got a 2 hex radius AoE fire damage and inflicts burning with no percentage chance to resist. It's got Golden Horde, which is just an upgraded version of the best summoning spell in the game. The one that allows you to summon a tier 1 unit for mana that then takes gold as upkeep. You've got Chaotic Rebuke and Scion of Flame, which basically gives people who attack your heroes and units in melee a chance to take damage. And they're immune to burning and they have fire resistance, and they set things on fire. There's just a lot of potential here. You know, especially if you get the root of case, you start making your spells cheaper. Then you've got one of the, you probably got the best city spell in the game, right? Because it could be used offensively and defensively, where you target a city, and then you just get five free gremlins in the battle once per turn. It is so good. This is one of, this is probably the best city summon spell in the game, like a, a city targeting spell. Demonic focus is probably the weakest part of this, but even then it's still good, because whenever another unit dies, all your battle mages and support units just gain a bit of health and a bit of strength. And so this gives you a lot of momentum in a fight. Yeah, just the whole book just does everything right. It's a Chaos Affinity book. Of course, it's going to be strong. It's just, it's just really damn good. The Tome of the Demon Gate, on the other hand, this is like a little bit weaker. Yes, you have the Demon Gate, which does allow you to recruit fiend units. And it functions as a teleporter that doesn't have an upkeep cost. So 
there is a little bit going there. You do get demon kin, which is a major racial transformation. It's one of probably the mid-tier racial transformations. The fact that you turn your people into desolate walkers with immunity to burning. They also have flying and frenzy. Um, frenzy is quite good because whenever a unit lands an attack, it gains a stack of strengthened. You know, demon kin, demon gate, both pretty good. Uh, but Sacrificial Slaughter, right, kills a target-friendly unit that does AoE damage. You've got Demonic Anthem. Demonic Anthem is actually a really damn good hero skill, which basically means non-fiend and non-hero units that uh, die turn into random tier 1 fiends. So this works really well if you build a whole army of tier 1 units supported by heroes. Uh, and then you can use fight for power to combine those demons together to get bigger stronger demons um and you can also summon demons from your vassals so i think there's there's quite a lot going on here with the demon gate it's just it's a lot of work to get a lot of power that like chaos channeling offers way more out the gate um so i would mostly only ever take tome of the demon gate if i just wanted to play around with demons now materium has sat around for a very long time waiting for their books to be good a bit like the shadow books and these next two books are really damn good the tome of the golden realm is probably going to be the only s tier materium book um and then the other book is going to be a tier that is the uh, the tome of the crucible they're both they're two really good books Mostly the Tome of the Golden Realm hits S tier because the Gold Golem is a ridiculous tier 5 unit because it costs gold to maintain. Uh, it has Gilded Strike, it can inflict Gilded, it can generate a whole bunch of cash. Uh, it has the Golden Curse which turns people into gold when they attack him. Uh, just it's just it's just really good it's just really really good and i'm pretty sure this thing will just attack infinitely anything that's gilded around it it's an incredible frontline pole arm unit uh just really really insanely good really really powerful gold golem then you've got gold touch which is a nice minor racial transformation that just makes you resistance to magic and gives you extra gold gilding blast aoe affects people with gilded allows you to generate a lot of cash from your battles luxury markets allows you to buy now more often and considering the amount of money you're going to have running for this with the things like the reagent refinery gilded magic the bizarre of wonders this could probably be 10 gold per unique adjacent province improvement and it would be a little bit better but still um this still fits just just about squeaks into s tier the tome of the crucible on the other hand just about squeaks into a tier the great foundry is pretty decent Gives you a little bit of gold, a little bit of draft. The Root of Materium is always handy. Meteor Strikes, both in terms of the hero ability and the arrow ability, are both very good. It gives you a lot of AoE damage, up to 15 AoE fire damage on every single repeating ranged attack. Um, which Materium builds typically don't have many repeating ranged attacks, so you're going to have to figure out where you're going to get those from. Meteor Shower is a pretty decent combat enchantment. Lava Burst is an amazing damage and debuff spell. The fact that it inflicts 40 fire damage in a 2 hex radius, inflicts burning, slowed, and sets the ground on fire is insane. Combos really well with some of the late game chaos books. Pyroclastic Eruption, not a particularly interesting thing. Overall, I'd say this is mostly carried by Meteor Arrows, Lava Burst, and uh, the Great Foundry. These other things, like the Fortified Crucible, these are all okay, but you're never really good. You shouldn't be defending. That's the thing. This late into the game, you should never be defending. You should be on the offensive. So things that help you defend are not particularly interesting to me. Uh, I accidentally put the Tome of the Creator up there. I wanted to put the Tome of the Crucible. I did kind of like mess up the order of my books. Listen, I'm going to have to cut the cut the footage up slightly because I, I skipped the um, the tier 3 Materium books. But we're going to move on now to the tier 4 Nature books. Um, and I'm just going to be straight up with you here. Uh, all the rest of the Nature books go up into S tier. They are just disgustingly good. Um, we'll loop back to the, to the final book later. But the Tome of Paradise is insane. Okay, The Garden of Bliss is an amazing way to generate an insane amount of mana from your food. The Root of Nature is fantastic. It allows your nature buff and healing spells to heal you extra health. Um, literally every single one of the abilities that you unlock from the Tome of Paradise has incredible utility and power. Exhilarating Pollen. Hey, 15 morale. Nice. All enemy units have a chance to become distracted. Distracted allows you to flank them. Enchanted Bloom. Turn the entire terrain into grassland. Also gives you two food and two production per grassland in the city. Really good scaling. Nature's Bounty. 
is okay. Probably the two, the three worst parts of this are exhilarating pollen, nature's bounty, and fortress of vines, and they're still all decent, right? Fortress of Vines makes your cities basically unsiegeable, especially because it spawns living vines next to enemies each turn during the battle. Um, the fact that this is a city spell and you can cast it, literally, this like is actually just broken. Um, this this is just busted, and it's one of the worst parts of this book. And Blessing of Paradise is super nice economically, and Gaius Chosen. This is maybe one of the best major racial transformations in the game, particularly if you went for a Tome of the Horde build um, because it will allow you to essentially let your units act as if they're a tier or two up. S typically higher tier units get status resistance and more health. What does this do? It gives you status resistant and more health and it's a major racial transformation so it has no mana upkeep on your race. Just really fantastic. Super good, uber good, really amazing. Um, does serious work for your people. Also, not written here, but I'm pretty sure it makes your people um, plant, makes them into plants, which has an interaction with the tier 5 book, as well as some of the animal boost or the plant boosting spells. The Tome of the Nature's Wrath, on the other hand, this is also just ridiculous, right? Horned Gods is probably the best tier 5 unit in the game. Um, animate Flora, insane. Just summon a free unit every three turns. Wild Eruption, summon Living Vines. Deal damage and summon living vines. It's literally the most overpowered ability in the game. Um, rec recla reclaiming bolt, deal damage and heal. Uh, and it's a 150 base health tier 5 mythic unit that will gain 12 health per level. And also when it gets gets its mythic medal, it will just, just... Everything about this thing is just busted, okay? Then you have probably the three if not four most powerful spells in the entire game destructive well yeah yeah i would say that right you can destroy an enemy province turn it into a forest and then immediately awaken that forest to create an army of plants and animals and sometimes you get horned gods out of those it's so broken um these two spells in combination allow you to basically summon armies on your enemy's doorstep awaken instinct might actually be um like kind of kind of just straight up broken you can like turn two turn three you can charge in at the enemy completely eviscerate them take a little bit of counter attack damage then drop an awaken instant so all of your units will act again at well they will be berserked okay so they'll attack randomly but they will get to act again it's ridiculous particularly if you have a high range um army that are going to be able to use their their spells at range just be careful that your units actually have enemies in range because sometimes they will attack allies if there's no enemy in range. Um, and then devolve. This is basically just like kill a unit. Um, yeah, just everything about this is super good, especially the Root of Nature. Again, Nature's Avenger is an amazing support ability, especially when Gaia's Chosen turns you into plant people. Uh, I may as well, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the tier five just yet, but I just want you to look. At Force of Nature, which gives all plant units 20% crit chance, and the Tome of Paradise turns your people into plants, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. The Tome of Supremacy is probably just B tier, but the Tome of... Wait, did I mix those up? Hold on. Uh, yes, I did. Sorry. The Tome of Exaltation is probably S tier. The other one is B tier. So let's talk about the Tome of Supremacy real quick because it's not particularly good. You've got the Monument of Supremacy, which gives you a bit of draft, a bit of stability based on the number that you have built. It's, it's an okay building. The Eagle Rider is actually probably one of the better parts of this alongside the Supreme Magic, which does allow your units to do AoE light damage. When you do, um, or AoE spirit damage rather, when a battle mage kills something. Condemn Army is just an upgraded version of a previous spell. And Anthem of Victory is a pretty damn good battle-wide spell. But I just, I, this, this book just doesn't do enough compared to other tier 4 books. The Tome of Exaltation, on the other hand, this book is amazing. It does everything that you want. You have Angelicize, a major racial transformation that makes your people flying, gives them faithful, allows them to be celestials. I remember this also scales with a whole bunch of other things from faithful, okay? Remember that faithful combo is one of the things. Um, Ascended Warriors allows you to just rank up your army. The Shrine of Smiting might actually be... Uh, probably the most overpowered, maybe second most overpowered tier two, sorry, a tier five mythic unit in the game because of Divine Vengeance, 
which just lets you do a huge fat 28 damage to hex wide AoE to non faithful units, which, by the way, remember, Angelicize makes your units faithful. Uh, and then it also deals more damage based on the number of faithful units in the battle. So if you have, let's say, 15 faithful units in a battle, this thing will do 30, no, sorry, uh, 60 extra damage. Yeah, it's redonkulous. So it will do a straight up 90 damage smite um, if you have 15 faithful units in a battle. So you bring three shrines of smiting, give everyone faithful, boom, 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 boom. Exalted Brilliance is probably one of the worst hero skills in the game, but it's still okay, right? I wouldn't take it though. Um, resurrect unit, just bring a unit back from the dead. Temple of the Exalted, just pretty good. A um, little bit of stability, a little bit of mana. Um, but the real, the real power of this book is the Shrine of Smiting and Jealousize and right here, the Ruler Statue. Allied Empires and Level 3 free cities with a Pact of Vassalage grant 5 Imperium. This is one of the few ways in the game that you're going to be able to generate extra Imperium. One of the most important resources in the entire game for you to build a massive economy and to build up your perks. Your affinity perks. So again, things that give you access to things that you can't normally access are just super, super good. So the Tome of Exaltation is just super, super good. That's why it sits in S tier. The last two Shadow Books barely squeak by uh, into B tier based on the fact that they have extremely powerful unique units. Uh, the Tome of the Reaper has the Summon Reaper ability. It's a tier 5 mythic unit that has greater corpse consumption so it can heal a lot from killing things. It has Finger of Death to instigib something or just deal damage. Um, it can also turn them into zombies. Uh, you know, you'll have zombie generating a siege projects. You have the ability to harvest population. You can mark people for death. You have greater reanimation. It's just an okay book, right? That's why it's going to sit. The, the, the Reaper is lifting it up quite a bit. And it's sort of similar for the Tome of Oblivion. The Living Fog that inflicts insanity on its attacks. That's kind of lifting this up a lot. Uh, the Fog of Insanity is pretty cool. But it would be much more cool if it was a siege project. Um, as it stands, it's like, why would you be defending a shadow? You should be attacking. The Ritual of Somnia is actually a really damn good enemy army spell, which is kind of carrying this a little bit with the Summon Living, living Fog. Devouring Void. Devouring Void is kind of an interesting AoE damage spell. Yeah, it's just, these are just okay books. Now let's move on to the tier 5 books. I'm going to be honest with you, the Tome of the Archmage only barely squeaks by with an A tier off the back of Time Stop. Uh, Time Stop is a genuinely ridiculous spell, especially if you're a Battle Mage heavy army or just a range heavy army. The fact that you can AoE guaranteed stun six to seven units um, and grant flanking bonuses on them and make them have negative 50% evasion is just insane. All of these other spells are really just not worth writing home about. I mean, Astral Travel literally only teleports your hero, not the entire hero stack. So, I mean, there is stuff you can do there, but it's not great. Cosmic Overdrive just isn't super amazing. 30% damage is nice, but, you know, eh. Disruption Wave. I suppose you could say that this is also one of the best spells in the entire game because it literally obliterates all positive status effects on enemies and all negative status effects on allies. And it disables enemy unit enchantments. I mean, technically, Time Stop and Disruption Wave are literally game-ending spells. Um, like just they just win battles on their own especially when you have the Heart of Astral built and you're getting like the Sundered Resistance on debuffs and you're using a lot of range stuff I would say Time Stop and Disruption Wave are insane which kind of drags this up to an A but remember it's all relative right because we have to think about the you know Tome of the Chaos Lord for example which was probably oh man is it going to be my only C tier is it going to be no yeah it's going to be my C tier okay the Baylor is really good and that's what's carrying this here. Um, Call Forth Chaos Avatar. This is pretty damn good. Um, this is like a pretty damn good ability. Um, you could do some really interesting stuff with it. The Heart of Chaos is good, right? Chaos damage spells deal extra fire damage. Or your debuff spells inflict misfortune. Um, Demonic Slaughter is also pretty damn good. Like there's stuff in here that's really, really good. But is it better than other tomes? It's hard to justify that. Um, like Insight Rebellion, Mind Controlled Enemies at the start of the battle, Minus Stability while it's besieged, Demonic Onslaught gives Killing Momentum and Hasten to all units for a few turns. It's just, it's just not a very good tier 5 book in my opinion. 
The only book that gets actually worse than that is the tier five Materium book, which I'm going to give D tier. Um, that doesn't mean that it's worse than like some of these other lower tier books because it does do a lot of work. It's just it's the worst. Um, it's the worst tier five book. OK, like you've got Tectonic Shatter here. Yeah, this is like the best part of this. All enemies sustain 30 damage, have a 60% chance of becoming stunned. Really quite good. Really an amazing spell. Um, the Earth Titan combat summon is all right. The Earth Shatter engines are, as far as I can tell, just trash. I haven't actually tried them out yet, but I can't even imagine why. I was like looking at their stats and I'm like, okay, they don't even do damage. They just break obstacles and slow people. It's like, okay, who cares? Um, Eternal Earth is genuinely really good if you're elementally inclined, because all of your elementals will revive after two turns of dying. Um, and the Heart of Materium is pretty decent, right? Because your Materium spells will deal extra damage. So this Tectonic Shatter will actually do 50 damage. And, you know, you've got the Ancient of Earth, which makes your heroes really big. And they get a lot of health and a lot of damage. But even so, like, is that even going to remotely compare to the Tome of the Goddess of Nature? Um, where this Force of Nature ability alone just completely... Yeah, I, I don't even know how to explain this. This force of nature and mass rejuvenation together just completely obliterates everything in the Tome of Creator. Force of nature gives all of your units a 20% critical, critical hit chance, four blight damage with no downside, um, and it affects plant, animal, and cavalry. Your units will be plants if you go for the Gaia transformation, by the way. You also have the heart of nature, so your nature damage spells deal more damage, and they inflict more weakened. Um, and then you get the mass rejuvenation, which heals all of your units for 40 temporary hit points and brings all of your animals and plants back to life, which you should be using if you're playing a nature build. <laughs> Forest awareness isn't great, but yeah, it's fine. Uh, yeah, just this is obviously just an S tier book. We've already put it up there. The only other book that I think will get S tier is the Tome of the God Emperor because of this spell right here, uh, Divine Protection, which gives all units in your army. It's a friendly army spell, so it's cast in the world map. It gives them resurgence, which basically just makes your army unable to be auto-resolved away. Um, like, as long as you win the battle in auto-resolve, none of your units will die, which is just bonkers. Um... It's super, super good. Exalted Champion is an alright spell. Wrath of the Emperor is a pretty good enemy army spell, especially because Demoralized and Condemned stack in a very nice way, making your enemies easy to break. Um, Dome of Projection is quite a powerful uh, hero ability. It creates a Dome of Protection that makes your people take about 22 to 25% less damage in total. Uh, it heals them for 30 hit points. It has a cooldown of 2. It's just it's super good. It's super, super, super good. Uh, Mass Revive, by the way, just revives all of your units. You cast this the turn before you win the battle, bada bing, bada boom, all of your units are alive and you lost nothing. Um, Tome of the God Emperor, probably, yeah, this is this is a S tier book. Uh, when it comes to the Tome of the Eternal Lord, on the other hand, oh man. I'll give it, I'll give it, will I give it the S? Honestly, thematically, this deserves an S tier. But I don't think I can give it an S tier. Um, because it just isn't very good. Uh, yeah, I'll give it the A tier. I'll give it to the A tier. That's where I'm going to settle it. It's up here in A tier. Withering Mist is an amazing combat enchantment. It does 15 damage to all foes. Has a 90% chance of inflicting blind and weakened. Quite good. You can raise an entire stack of low tier undead units onto a target world hex. You have true death magic. I don't think Mark for Death is a particularly good uh, debuff, but yeah. I just I, I think this should have like frost damage or something on it as well battlefield reanimation is another reason this is pumping up to a tier because you can just revive all your undead units and all your units should be undead if you're playing shadow eternal one is an amazing skill for melee heroes you could just send them in uh time after time and let them die over and over and over again and they will just keep doing work basically makes your heroes immortal the heart of shadow is also quite good because shadow damage spells will deal more frost damage and also inflict status vulnerability making people more weaker to your status effect which kind of combos really nicely with withering mist there's, there's just a lot there um but yeah I, I i think i just want to reiterate what i said at the start here uh closing thoughts i really do think that chaos and nature are the two strongest affinities right now uh closely followed by order and astral and then shadow and materium are just kind of bad they're just not great at the moment but that's okay. I hope they I hope they buff them up. Anyway, that's going to be it for the tier list. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.